Hey, uh, welcome to uh, uh, Intercourse. Um, just want to check in a little bit. I, uh, uh, I'm a little, uh, uh, I'm a little under under the weather. Uh, some some crazy ass uh, flu going around out here. But um, uh, so I may be a little more delirious than usual. A um, couple things. We are uh, uh, we've premiered uh, uh, two episodes now, and uh, as you may or may not have read, our numbers were uh, extremely strong for the premiere of the show. We bumped up, um, uh, I don't know how many percentage overall. I think it was uh, after the some of the DVR numbers came in, it was uh, uh, really significant. Um, like, I want to say uh, um, 10 to 15% in some, uh, in some demographics. So, uh, and it is officially the uh, the most watched program uh, in the history of FX um, across uh, uh, all uh, all types of shows, um, and uh, uh, so everyone's very happy about that. Episode two, uh, I don't think the numbers are out yet uh, until Monday, but uh, they. Uh, they were really solid. I think they fell off uh, in in proportion to the same amount they tend to fall off every year. So uh, everyone was pleased about that. So I thank you for um, showing up to your TV sets uh, on Tuesday nights. Um, still amazed that uh, people uh, actually do that. Um, so obviously the uh, the fan challenge uh, uh, has been uh, achieved, and uh, we uh, we will have um, we're still finding out the exact number from the network, um, but it's uh, I think there'll be a, a bunch of folks we can invite out. Um, um, I don't want to throw out a number. I know it'll be more than we had last year, and. Uh, um, uh, and we will have a, uh, we'll fly them out and put them up and uh, invite them to our uh, finale party where we will watch the final episode of the series. And, um, and, um, uh, and then probably have uh, um, some sort of uh, party or um, hopefully we'll get the, uh, Forest Rangers to play, and we'll do uh, we'll do something festive, um, uh, and that will be uh, part of the uh, the DVD uh, extras. Home Entertainment uh, is very much involved in the uh, in the fan challenge, and, and end up um, financing a, a, a majority of it. So um, uh, that's that. I. Uh, uh, I established like people keep asking what's the criteria to win and you know they should know better that it's me so there probably there is no criteria um, it's uh, it's a somewhat absurd and random as as everything I do um, sort of we will uh, I've reached out to my social media people who help me with my accounts and and we'll look at the people that uh, follow me and and we will see who has um you know who has retweeted soa um tweets the most who has hashtagged it the most and uh so we'll we'll look at uh, some of that and we'll choose some people based on statistics and then um uh i like to include a I like to include a certain uh, uh, number of members of the military, so we'll have that percentage, and then uh, and some of it will be um, based on um, fans that I've encountered, and and I and I see a great deal on uh, on social media who have continued to support the show over the years. So um, uh, I appreciate. Uh, 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 
the DMs and and such. Uh, I don't really have uh, an opportunity to respond to any of those. And some of them, quite frankly, terrify me. Uh, but uh, uh, they, uh, we will, we will, we have some sort of process. And uh, uh, and obviously, for a bunch of you, it'll make you happy. And for the rest of you, you'll, you know, fucking want me dead. So that's that. Uh, we'll probably do that in the next couple of weeks. I'm still uh, trying to pin down how many people I can invite, which is why. Uh, 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 I haven't uh, announced any winners yet, but uh, we will do that. Um, and that's it. We're uh, we I'm in the process of uh, of uh, writing episode uh, eleven, and uh, uh, which uh, starts shooting like in three hours. Uh, I'm a little behind. Um, and um, uh, we are filming episode uh, ten. And uh, I'm in post on episode eight. Um, so things are uh, moving along at uh, sort of uh, the clip that they do this time of year. Um, what else? Uh, no big news to speak of. Um, I had a I had a really cool guest lined up and um, and he couldn't. Uh, uh, he's. Uh, Overseas, so we couldn't uh, actually hook it up, and uh, and I don't say that as a tease. I, I don't want to say who it is because hopefully I can get him next week. Um, and uh, uh, and my wife is uh, uh, Katie's working tonight, and uh, so uh, it's sorry, it's just you and I, kids. Um, and uh, um, so that's it. Let's uh, uh, let's let's jump into some questions before I. Uh, uh, fucking pass out here. Um, uh, the uh, lady in glasses in box is at three. Hi, what's your name? My name is Alexis. Hi, Alexis. Hey, um, so I saw you at the show on Friday. I went to go see Katie and the Forest Rangers. Oh, cool. That's right. Did you like the show? Yes, I loved it. Um, I wanted to ask you when it comes when it comes into terms of picking music for the show, like what do you and Bob kind of sit down and watch what you've got so far and go from there? I mean, how do you go about picking it? Because Bohemian Rhapsody was amazing. Um, what ends up happening is uh, for some of the bigger montages, I I have a sense of. Uh, Maybe what song we would uh, we should use or would want to try, and um, um, and then uh, I usually go to Bob and find out if it's you know if it's feasible in terms of rights, and then if it's feasible in terms of production, and and obviously Bohemian Rhapsody is you know a monster sort of a song, and and Bob was up for the challenge, and. Uh, um, uh, and I, you know, you throw out these ideas and you have a sense of maybe that'll be cool. And, and, uh, but, uh, I've learned now that I can hand something off to Bob. That's like a three or four in terms of, you know, uh, the level of good idea it is. And then by the time Bob gets done with it, it's a, it's a nine or a 10. And, uh, I was blown away at what he was able to do with Bohemian Rhapsody and, uh, you know the 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 great thing about working with Bob um, and uh, and uh, uh, is that I can um, you know we we the music is to enhance story you know it's not to compensate for story it's not to you know um, distract you from story I really you know I really have tried to use music um, to uh, sort of add a layer of narrative to a story. And uh, um, and the great thing working with Bob is that we've, we've got a shorthand at this point that, you know, because I'm not, I, I write lyrics and I love writing lyrics, but I'm not a musician and, and uh, I'm somewhat um, uh, lame when it comes to uh, uh, the vocabulary. So Bob and I just sort of have a shorthand that we've, we've established and it works really well. And, uh, and then the great thing with Bob is then we have all the stems for the music when we when we create it ourselves and we can mold it and shape it and 
and cut it and edit it around the scenes to really enhance the storytelling process. And uh, it gives us a, late, a, a great deal of creative control and, uh, and really uh, we're able to, uh, uh, to make that work. Um, but um, and then and then for the rest of the music on the show, what ends up happening, you know, because there's a lot of music and scenes that aren't necessarily montages and um, that, you know, aren't you, you may not recall specifically, but definitely, um, uh, uh, you know, is is part of the rhythm of the show. And and Bob uh, will usually give me a bunch of choices for those and uh, and we'll narrow it down and, and pick those choices. But um uh, it's it's become very uh, uh, it's become very collaborative. Uh, in fact, there's a song I wanted in episode ten, and uh, and Bob, uh, you know, um, we we looked into it, and then he threw out a couple other suggestions, and and one of the one of the other suggestions was a Dylan song, which I had never really heard before, and it was a beautiful song, and. Uh, um, which will, which is a much better idea than the one I had. And, uh, um, so that's the great thing about Bob is that he's just, you know, he's sort of, uh, 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 kind of the, the professor a little bit, you know? So, um, uh, that's my incredibly <laughs> feverish long-winded answer to your question. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman in box number one with the, uh, Confederate flag behind his head. How's it going, Om? That's the Scottish flag behind me, by the way. What's that? That's the Scottish flag behind me, by the way. <laughs> hey, um, my What's name's up? Liam. Um, I, I was just wondering if I could possibly, like, um, come up, give you a wee daft idea, like, the... I'm not, like, pitching for a writing thing or anything like that. I can't, I can't take a pitch, man. I can't take an idea. No, 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 no. no. I'm just saying... Or, I don't want to. I don't want to put you in that position, so I can't really okay. hear a pitch. Can I ask you a different question then? You can ask me a question. Yes. Sure. Um, I know that you worked with Tommy Flanagan and all that, and you've come over here to um, the UK, Ireland, and all that. Yes. What's that like working with um, overseas contract overseas actors and um, going to? I don't. You know, it's still new for me. Uh, I'm, I'm. You know, we're going to be shooting uh, at least uh, the pilot for uh, 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 my next show in the UK. So um, I've been over there a couple times now, and uh, and I will. Uh, you know, I'll use a lot of UK actors, and um, and uh, um, you know, and I and I intend to have Scots playing Scots and French playing French, and and. Uh, and Brits playing Brits whenever I can. So, um, uh, so it's all still real new for me. You know, um, I, uh, you know, I'm relying heavily on, uh, on, um, on, on, uh, on Fox 21 and, and, uh, and FX and, and my production partners, uh, to, uh, to sort of help me through this. And, um, uh, but, um, I'm excited about it. You know, uh, I get burnt out, uh, very easily creatively and, uh, so I love the idea of uh, not only doing something that's completely different creatively, but that's different process-wise, you know? So I don't feel like I'm falling back into the exact same rhythm of what I've been doing for the last seven years, that there'll be a new process, there'll be new people. Um, and, uh, um, and I like, as much as it scares me, I like having to learn um, uh, new things. I like having to like. I, I love the idea of that. Running that show will be completely different than running this show, and that I'll have to learn a whole new set of skills because that's sort of you know what keeps it fresh and and uh, uh, and keeps me challenged and uh, helps me from you know not putting a fucking gun in my mouth. So uh, uh, I uh, I thank you for your question, my friend. Uh, this uh, lady in the corner here with the tattoo on the shoulder sitting mysteriously in the dark. Hi. Yes, you. Yes. Hi, Mr. Howard. I can't hear you, darling. Can you hear me 
Can't hear you. Okay, let's go to the let's go to uh, red hoodie and uh, Viking hat. <laughs> oh, okay. Tattoos and like choosing like what's the process of choosing the tattoos for each character, especially like when they add tattoos throughout with like juice with the sun and the shine and right, take right, with right, the right. Donna tattoo and stuff. Um, um it's a. Uh, it's sort of a collaborative process. A lot. Sometimes it'll be about story. Like I knew I wanted Juice to have um, that new tattoo uh, based on the things that he'd gone through, um, and then had uh, um, my makeup artist work with uh, um, um, some tattoo artists and came up with that design. Um, but sometimes an actor will come to me and say, "Hey, you know, I'm." Uh, this would be a significant thing for me to get a tattoo. And I think Kim, I think Kim and I um, talked about the, uh, um, uh, the, you know, Kim has a tattoo on its chest, like right here, that's this creepy little doll with a gun in its hand. And, and he loved the, you know, he had the, he loved the significance of that. And um, so it, it's sort of both like Charlie, all, you know, Charlie was the one that came to me and wanted to put his son tattooed on, uh, on uh, Abel on his chest. And, and I love that idea. So then we did one for Thomas and, um, uh, and um, so it's, uh, it's pretty collaborative. And, and then in terms of the design, um, you know, if an actor has an idea, we'll play with it or, or, um, um, uh, you know, a, a, a symbol or, or, or a glyph or something, we'll play with it. But a lot of times we'll just go to our, you know, we have great, um, a great uh, makeup department and uh, they work with a lot of great artists. And uh, so we'll come up with a bunch of different designs and, uh, um, and then end up, you know, choosing one that we think makes sense. Thank you. Um, the lady in uh, with the blonde hair, and very red lipstick. Uh, box number. Yes, yes. Hi. Can Hi. you hear me this week? I can, yes. All right, very good. Um, I have a question. It's um, a season six question. Uh -oh. In John 832, there were two ravens in Gemma's birdcage. Yes. Did they represent the death of Clay and Tara? Were they like foreshadowing? Um, kind of reminiscent of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven? Um, uh, it, I love the idea of uh, Gemma having these, um, uh, they're actually, uh, they're actually African crows because uh, you, uh, in, in the States, there's all these um, uh, wildlife uh, um, laws that you can't have, um, American birds um, uh, used on shows if they're, if they're in danger. So they're actually African crows, um, and uh, we uh, we um, we uh, uh, graphically remove the um, the white ring around its neck, and uh, and they're much more they're much bigger than American crows. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's any specific. Uh, uh, as much as I'd like to. You know, take credit and think that I actually thought that far in advance. Uh, um, it's it's really not. I um, there's been a sort of an ongoing absurdity to Gemma's birds since the early um, first season when we when we had a bird and and then like at some point in the season the bird we lost the bird handler and the bird went away and we had to have another bird. So rather than trying to have a bird that looked like the other one. I was like, fuck it, let's just get a completely different bird. And then it sort of became a gag, like, you know, every two or three shows, we'd have a different, completely different bird in the cage. So um, uh, that has to do with some of it. But um, uh, I did like, uh, I did like the fact that uh, she had ravens and, uh, um, and, uh, you know, she'll keep those, uh, she'll keep those this season, you know, and, uh, um, cause it just felt like Gemma's at that place now where, you know, the only bird that makes sense is a raven. So thanks. 
Uh, the gentleman uh, with the black T-shirt and uh, who seems to be at work. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not at work. <laughs> yeah. um, I've just got a question about... Uh, well, What's your name? First, uh, I'm, I'm Lou. Uh, yeah, so... Um, I started watching your show around the end of season three. My brother put it, put me onto it, and then in the off season, we also watched The Shield. Oh right, right. Yeah, so uh, I've got a question referring to that because, like, obviously, there's been a lot of uh, people you've had from The Shield in it, apart from one major one. And I'm just wondering whether you know it was like there wasn't really a role for him, or uh, he was just uh, just scheduling issues. So, like, Wait, was please. there a point where you'd see Michael Chiklis in it or not? You know, here's the deal with Chicky. I I, uh, I love Michael. I think he's an amazing actor, and and I always felt like it would be impossible to put either him or Walton on the show and separate it from the Shield because to me those two characters were like you know so iconic on the Shield, and and that you know it would be hard in this world to separate those two guys from those from those characters you know because they were bigger than life and uh, and i've had discussions with both um, michael and and walton about it and and then walton and i had that i think i've shared this before we had a conversation and uh, uh, i don't know a couple of years ago now and uh, or a year and a half ago whatever and uh, and i said uh, you know uh, I said the only way, you know, we can we could ever have you on this show is, you know, is if you play a woman. And uh, so um, uh, we kind of ran with that. And uh, uh, and uh, and hence, you know, Venus was born. Um, and uh, and really, to me, that's the only, you know, that character could not have been could not be, you know, uh, uh, 180 degrees further from uh um, from Shane Vandrell. So, um, uh, uh, but it's hard with Chicky, you know, that, you know, Vic was such an iconic character and, and, um, I just felt like, um, you know, uh, there was a lot of similarities in the show already in terms of style and, and tone that it would be really hard to, uh, to separate those two. And, uh, but it's not for, you know, for not, it's not for, uh, uh, any other reason, you know, I love Michael. He's a great actor and, you know, uh, you know, he, he'd love to do the show. He just, he's just insisted that he won't do it with tits. So, uh, um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I think he's doing, he's, uh, he's on horror show. He's doing a horror show now for, uh, for Ryan Murphy. So he's a busy guy, but, uh, uh, no, it was really just, um, tonal and, and, uh, and the fact that that character, I couldn't separate from the shield, you know, but, uh, 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 hopefully that'll put to rest the issue, but thank you. Uh, the, uh, the, let's see the gentleman in the center box up top in the red shirt. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Oh, perfect. My question you sort of answered already with an, uh, another one, but I was looking, or I wanted to ask you, do you have, do you know what I'm referring to when I say Easter eggs? Like in the first six seasons, were there hidden things that would have indicated something in season seven? Like, you oh. know how the birds changed? Like how she re re referenced the birds? Yeah, there's some. It's not so much Easter eggs as... Uh I guess they're Easter eggs, you know, like, um, uh, I'll do stuff with, uh, like in season one, I think the, the, the mausoleum that Jax was sitting in front of the name above it was, uh, Patmos, which was the actual name of John the Revelator. You know what I mean? So I'll do stuff like that, that n nobody or nobody should know what the fuck that means. But, uh, um, and, uh, you know, and, and then I'll do stuff with books a lot. Like I'll make a lot of, I'll have a lot of, um, uh, literary references, um, in, in, uh, in the show and, and some people will get them. Some people won't. Um, 
I make a lot of references to absurdist theater in the show and uh, because there's to me there's such an absurdist line that runs through this show and uh, and um, you know uh, uh, and I sort of salute those people um, for that influence um, uh, the good thing is though um, I'm sort of the only one that knows what the Easter eggs are and I forget. <laughs> so it's not like I can, I have them written down. So therefore it usually doesn't, it won't, it doesn't really do viewers much good. Cause I can't even fucking remember what they are, but uh, I'll watch an episode and go, Oh yeah, that's when I, you know, uh, but, uh, uh, but, uh, that's, well, I gave you one, I gave you one about, uh, Patmos. So that was one I remembered. So thank you. Uh, let's go to, um, the smoking lady scares me. So let's go up here to box number one. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, so I, my main question is about Gemma. I've read a lot of her saying how this season she says a lot of one thing, but her mind is thinking a different thing. So in the first episode, which that moment between her and Juice... Um, where he asks her, why, how can she talk about Tara? And she says what she says. I want to know, like, right. how much of her is saving face and is trying to cover her ass? And how much of her really believes what, she, what she's saying? No, that's a good question. I think the, I think, and not to be flipped, but I think uh, the answer is that, um, uh, is is both of those things meaning that um Gemma is you know she's learned to compartmentalize so many secrets and so many sins over the years in that um mama bear box you know that I'm doing this for the good of the family and um and eventually you know compartments get really full with you know if you keep stuffing shit in them and um and I think she really believes that, you know, or at least she's trying to convince herself that that's true, that what happened with Tara in her mind and, and to a certain degree, she's absolutely right. She had misinformation. She thought Tara was selling out the club. Now, does that justify the brutality of what happened? No, you know, but in her mind, it gives her an excuse to then say, OK, it was an accident. And if I tell somebody the truth, we'll all we'll we'll all be worse off. So I think it's how she really, you know, wraps her brain around the carnage that she's created. And, um, you know, and like anything else, when we tell a lie like that, we, you know, we try to put it in that box and, and hope that nobody shakes the box. Now, the problem is she has no idea um, uh when she tells that lie about the Chinese, the ramifications that it's going to have. She doesn't know that there's a war hinged on all those relationships. She doesn't know, you know, what's going on with August Mark. So it sets in motion this series of events that creates all this carnage and and a lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, and a lot of pain and suffering. And, you know, uh, that's what will eventually keep stacking up against her in 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 that that one lie that she feels she's doing to protect her family, you know, is creating uh, widespread chaos. And um, you know, as um, uh, quite honestly, as uh, as most lies tend to you know tend to uh, uh, tend to do, if you uh, um, uh, you know if you hold to them, and uh, you know, she'll uh, I will say this, she'll have several, maybe not several, but at least a couple opportunities throughout the season um, to come clean. And uh, um, and uh, I won't spoil, and, and we can see what happens when she has those opportunities. But, um, um, you know, I think, uh, I think it's just how she's wired. You know, you think about the fact that, um, you know, the whole series is based on that Hamlet archetype of, you know, of... Um, of uh, of uh, Hamlet and, and 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 Gertrude and Claudius and uh, um, and unlike you know unlike Gertrude uh, uh, you know I think Gemma is very um, was very uh, 
complicit in that original sin and um uh and she's been living with that lie for you know uh decades so um she uh she's very good at it and uh um but she um uh she does she does believe it and i think that's what she has to continue to uh uh to do is is convince herself of it day after day after day so um i'll take one more question and then i have to go and drink some fluids and pass out so uh let's go with this lady in the corner in the lovely uh red shirt yes hi can you hear me okay i can yes fantastic so besides the fact that i'm honored to talk to you i wanted to ask you about your prequel and if you had any ideas of who you'd like to play the various people in the episodes if you're thinking about reprising your role or if it's going to be much earlier yeah it'll be early it'll be um uh my hope is if we do it that it's about the the origins of the club and um it would take place uh uh ideally i'd like to probably begin it in vietnam with uh with john teller and piney winston um so it'll be about them coming back from uh from the war and uh sort of facing what was going on culturally and and um on socially and uh and how the club sort of sprung up from that so it's really um you know I think fans are looking forward to it, but I, I keep telling fans that it's um, it's totally a, it's a totally a different show, you know, that it's uh, um, it's not it's not so much pulp violence like we we do and uh, on Sons that it, it'll have a different vibe to it because it's a period thing. And uh, and it really will be about, you know, um, uh, John Teller trying to uh, establish these ideals and um, and uh, you know and, and and live on you know and try to set up this uh, this little world on the fringe that uh, ultimately became the club. Um, but I have I have no idea. Um, although Charlie uh, suggested the other day that he play John Teller, so uh, um, <laughs> uh, but uh, I uh, I don't know. You know I have not. Uh, uh, I've not um, uh, really uh, gotten that far in the process, and uh, um, uh, and I think it would probably end uh, with the last member uh, of the nine joining the uh, uh, joining the pack, which was uh, which was Clay. So um, uh, uh, it'll be interesting to sort of end the mythology with the guy that then sort of. Um, was the primary catalyst in, in the in the in 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 this mythology. So um, that's what I know, and and hopefully we'll be able to do it in uh, probably a year or two. Uh, we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens when uh, uh, when I head over to the UK. Um, uh, but that's it. Thank you. Those were awesome questions. I really appreciate it, and uh, I hope I made sense. And um, uh, and again, I, uh, I love you guys. I, I so value the time and energy that you put into this show and the fact that you uh, uh, you show up each week and, and engage and watch and, and, and give a shit and, uh, um, and allow me to do this. So um, uh, that's it. We, uh, we will do this again next week, and I'll try to get my mysterious guest star friend to, uh, to dial in from uh, the... Uh, the fucking Amazonian jungle or wherever the fuck he is. Uh, so that's it. Goodbye. Thank you. Tuesday night, 10 p.m. FX Networks. Episode three. It ain't pretty. It just it just gets worse. <laughs>